When you discover who you are, then you, everything else is going to fall into place. But there's going to be like, I, I feel for sure that this was my life purpose, that discovering the secret and doing everything that I'm doing, I, I know for sure this is what I was meant to do. So there is that aspect too, but don't lose sight of finding out who you are. That is so important because the person, the person comes and goes, right? that comes and goes, but the infinite being that you are, awareness, consciousness, is eternal. And so when you've got that one, that path, and you're living your life as that, well then, oh my gosh, you can do whatever you want. <laughs> because you will have an amazing, incredible life that free and free of fear and free of all negativity, all negative thoughts, all negative emotions, all problems, you will just have a great life. Need motivation? Watch the top 10 we believe nation. Hey, it's Evan Carmichael and I make these videos because you are probably the most ambitious person in your circle, but you know you're capable of more and you get that push by surrounding yourself with the best. So today let's learn from one of the best, Rhonda Byrne and my take on her top 10 rules of success. Enjoy. Rule number two, be peaceful and calm. When I discovered the secret, I was just, I really, really trained that monkey mind <laughs> to be positive, positive, positive. And, um, and so completely changed my life by just changing my mind and the way that I thought. But to, but still there were times and situations that arose where the, I, I would get completely disturbed and this emotion would just rush over me. Negative emotion would rush over me. And it's all, all through welcoming, through, through discovering who we really are and through welcoming all of the things in the greater secret, actually. And now I pretty well live my life in calm and peaceful in every situation. And, and you can do it. You can have that life. And if you are calm and peaceful, you're happy. You're happy all the time. And so there, there aren't many things that disturb my peace of mind anymore. And because we don't really, I think we put it in the greatest secret, um, we're not looking for peace of mind. We're looking for peace from mind, aren't we, <laughs> really? <laughs> That's the truth. So, yeah, so when you understand who you are, who you really are, and and then you start to have a happiness just arise within you, then you just find that person that used to annoy you just doesn't annoy you anymore. And you'd be like, how come I get on really well with that person? I, what, what was it that ever bothered me about that person or, or the restaurant that you never really liked to go to and when you go to it, you're like, why didn't I like this restaurant? This restaurant is so cool. I mean, they've got this new menu and I don't know what, you, I don't know what was wrong with me. I've completely changed. Nothing will affect you in the way that affects you anymore. And, and you know, everything in life, traffic jam. It's just, you know, when you get caught in traffic, do you know what the universe is telling you? Stop. Stop. And just be still. Just stop and be still and be calm and be peaceful. That's what it's telling you. Everything is a gift. Absolutely everything. Rule number three, activate your healing power. How can you activate your self-healing and help your body heal while feeling the discomfort in your body? And you know, it's tricky, isn't it? Because the body has all of its sensations and it kind of keeps reminding you there's this little thing going on. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to give you something that I do each day and I'm going to give you this. And also remember the super app and affirmations. So you need to visualise what yourself well. And I'll tell you what I do, what I've done in the past, is that I close my eyes and I just imagine that I am outside on a lawn and that I am jumping for joy and I and I'm going, yes, 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 that whatever it was has completely disappeared. So that is um that is visualizing, or you can visualize a phone call with somebody that you're really close to, like your mum, for example, and you're like, guess what, mum? It's gone, it's disappeared. And just visualize that phone call until the subconscious mind gets a hold of it. And then you're going to find 
you will be attracted to what will have it disappear and it will just disappear. Um, but in the meantime, I want to give you, and, you, and you've got this recording, okay, so you'll be able to go back and write these down. But these are just some affirmations that are really powerful that, uh, that's for your body. So I allow my body to heal itself. I allow my body to have perfect health. I allow perfection to manifest in this body now. I am happy, happy, happy. I am healthy, healthy, healthy. I am well, I am well, I am well. I am amazingly healthy. Thank you, thank you, thank you for my perfect health and well-being. So those affirmations are really, really powerful for your body, okay? And for anybody out there, for anything that you might be suffering from, it doesn't matter whether it's something big, whether it's something small, whether it's something that's just irritating or um, those affirmations are really amazing. Rule number four, practice welcoming feelings. In The Greatest Secret, we used an, there's an analogy about a bird flying by. It was actually to do with thought, I think, if I recall, that if a bird is flying by, we don't, we don't ask the bird, well, where are you from? What, what, what breed of bird are you? Where did you come from? Where are you going to? Um, you know, you just nested. Have you got a partner? Where's the rest of your family? I mean, we, we don't get involved with that bird, do we? We just let the bird fly on by. And that's what we should do with thoughts. And actually feelings, it's not a bad idea. It's just let them pass by because all that they are is energy. And if we just let them pass on by, then they don't stick to us and they don't stay and they don't impact our life. Um, also, if we are observing feelings, we are welcoming, welcoming feelings. And I've talked about welcoming before. Welcoming is a process that stops us from resisting. And so because resistance is really the one thing that gets in the way of manifestation is that we're resisting. And resistance, it's like doubt and um, I don't really believe that I'm going to get it. All of those doubts, that's just resistance. That's all it is. And so when we welcome something, that causes us to stop resisting. And the way that we welcome is we just get that feeling, that negative feeling, and we just allow that negative feeling to be here. We don't resist it. We don't try and push it away. We just allow it to be here and it will just dissolve. It's just energy and it will just spiral and dissolve and be completely gone. And your life just got a whole lot better from doing that. And so welcoming stops resistance. And so, and so that means that you're not identifying with the feeling and you're not believing the feeling because nothing's personal. You know, those feelings, they're just energy. They're not personal. Like they don't have your name on them. You think they do, but they don't. And thoughts don't have your name on, have your name on them either. They're just energy. We could say just energy passing by like clouds, you know. So, um, so yeah, that's, I mean, that's the secret, isn't it? Is, to not believe negative thoughts and negative feelings. If we could just do that, life would be great. And you don't have to, you don't have to try and control them. You just don't believe them. Right. And you might, and there might be a really juicy thought or a juicy feeling that comes in and, and you're kind of riding that feeling like a roller coaster for a few hours. And then when you've suffered enough from that awful feeling, you just, you just think, I've had enough. And then you realize, oh no. I was identifying with that feeling. I thought that that feeling was who I am. Because do you know what, what happens like guilt, for example, guilt, the energy of guilt can just be like passing by, just passing through. Except when it passes through, we can say, we can say, I'm guilty. But I know that was just guilt, nothing to do with us. Also, to make sure you're actually taking action after watching this video, I've designed a special free worksheet just for this video. The worksheet will highlight all of the lessons learned in this video, as well as pull out our three favorite learnings and quotes that will inspire you to actually do something. The worksheet will also give you space to write down what your key takeaways are and your specific 
plan of action to make sure you're getting results. If you want the worksheet designed specifically for this video, absolutely for free, there's a link in the description below. Go click on it and start building the momentum in your life and your business. I'll see you there. Rule number five, reject negative thoughts. When we reject a negative thought, are we creating resistance? We could be, it depends how you're rejecting it. If you're, just, if you're just kind of letting it go and not identifying with it and not believing it, then it's not going to create any resistance. But if you wish it wasn't there, and if you want it to go away and you all like that about it, then you are creating resistance. And the next part of Leslie's question is, to welcome a negative thought stops resistance. That's true. But are we manifesting that negative thought and letting it into our subconscious by welcoming it? Are we manifesting the negative thought when we welcome a negative thought? So, no, it won't manifest. And the reason it won't manifest is because we're not believing it. Because when we welcome it, we've noticed what it is, we're not believing it, we're not identifying with it, and it won't manifest. Thoughts only manifest when we believe them, when we identify with them. So welcoming not only releases the negative thought, it takes a whole lot of negative thoughts out of the subconscious mind with it. So, I mean, it's, all, it's a really incredible, my teacher would say, it's an automatic self-cleansing mechanism. So all we have to do is just kind of welcome that th negative thought, or welcome that negative feeling, and it's basically cleaning out everything. And as it does, you get lighter, your life becomes spectacular, you become so happy, nothing bothers you anymore. You don't even understand what the word problems means. It's some alien word that other people must experience, but you don't see a problem with anything anywhere. And life is just incredible and your body feels amazing. So um, so it's worth it, yeah, it's worth it. But you are not going to manifest that thought um, when you are welcoming it. Rule number six, let go of attachments to desires. You just have to let go of all the attachments to your desires, okay? When we let go of all our attachments to desires, guess what happens? All our desires manifest because when we don't have attachment to our desires, we don't have resistance. And so I don't know that... I, I, I try to think if I have if I have many desires anymore. I just love everything, the way life is, just the way it is, even the tricky stuff, even the curly stuff, even the sticky stuff. It's all just kind of fine. But I don't have an attachment to the way it's going to work out because I know that everything is fine. I know we're all safe. I know we're eternal. I know there's no end to any of us. I know we're having an adventure, we're having a human experience and it's interesting at times, isn't it? And it's fantastic at other times. I actually look at the world and I think it's incredible. I really think it's something else. Um, but I don't get so perturbed. I don't get perturbed by all of those things. It's just anymore. And so if you don't have attachment um, to things, then... And life is really, really great, actually. Um, attachments that kind of hurt us. Um, okay, Jill is saying, what do you mean by attachment to your desires? Okay, so attachment is like when I really, really want something and I've really, really got to have it. It's something that you really, really want and I've really got to have it and I want it and I can't be happy until I have it. I just, life isn't going to be good until I have it. That's like an attachment to your desire. Whereas if you were like, um, wouldn't it be, wouldn't it be nice? Wouldn't it be nice to have a new house? Okay, so here's the difference. I really, really want a new house. I can't stand this house. This house is falling down. This house has a lot of problems. And then on the other side of that is, wouldn't it be nice? Wouldn't it be nice to have a new house? Can you feel the difference? This one has is effortless. It's kind of effortless. Wouldn't it be nice? So you could say that in front of all of you, all of your um, desires. Wouldn't it be nice if I had this? Wouldn't it be nice? 
and so that you're not kind of attached because when you're attached it's really hard for it to manifest okay so in the greater secret I talk about attachment Um, I do a whole section on it and I do it because it's important um, because you can have whatever you want but attachment is something attachment is Attachment is full of fear, fear that you're not going to have it. Um, uh, you, you can love somebody and then you can be attached that you'll be afraid of losing them. You see, love isn't afraid of anything. Attachment is afraid of losing, losing something. So that's kind that's kind of the difference but if you if you just say wouldn't it be nice you know then it's like really easy going i mean you've got a magic wand you can create anything you want but you just got to be really cool about it right you got to be i can do that i can have that i can be that rule number 7 believe what you visualize i want you to know that there's not really any difference between you walking around in this world here this is for law of attraction no difference to that or you imagining in your mind there's no difference it doesn't know any difference between the two so if you're if you're visualizing it law of attraction for law of attraction this is something that you you already have and and so if you're not really believing it 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 just kind of means you need to do it some more Right and um, and and try and come up with some scenarios that are really believable to you. Like one of the things I would always do to manifest, and I don't know why it just worked for me. I defaulted to this. I would I would imagine I would imagine telling somebody what I had manifested that it had already manifested. So I would imagine those phone calls. I would imagine talking to a friend. I would imagine people saying, you know, saying to me, "Wow, how did you get that? Where did you get that?" So that was really believable to me, but if because if you really want something, then you're going to want to share it with family and friends and and so that really worked incredibly well for me. So maybe that might work for you. Give that a try. Rule number 8, stop comparing with others. In the greater secret, uh it is explained that there's only three kinds of thoughts. And they are comparing, describing, and measuring. Every single thought you have fits into one of those three categories. And all minds behave this way. All minds are comparing, measuring, and describing. Every single one of us. We're not unique, you know. <laughs> We're not unique. We've all, we've all got the same smorgasbord of thoughts to, to, to kind of play with. Um, so, but, but the thing is, it doesn't, with those thoughts, it doesn't matter what the mind does. What matters is that you don't believe those thoughts, right? You just, you just, you don't want to identify with those thoughts and don't believe them. You don't need to control them, be trying to bash them down with a hammer. Go, go. No, you don't have to do any of that. You just need to be observing and witnessing them. And that's, the moment that you observe a thought, you are no longer identified with that thought or believing that thought, and it can't manifest. You just, like, stop manifestation in its tracks for a negative thought, so it's really perfect. Um, the more you observe and don't believe thoughts, the quieter your mind will become. Um, and I talked before about thoughts are not personal, so they, you know, they're just looking for someone to energise them and just... Say, be on your way. You know, you don't belong here. I'm fabulous. <laughs> I'm the infinite being. I don't want any negative. I don't want any negative thoughts. Be on your way. Rule number nine: Overcome limiting beliefs. For anybody who has any belief that they don't want, like for example, I'm limited. There are only a certain number of things that I can do. Um, I can't do, I can't do that. I can't do anything that I want. I can't have anything that I want. I can't be anything that I want. If you have, if you have any of those beliefs, then you could do this too. So all you need to do is welcome the belief that you don't want. And for this person, this is what you're really going to find interesting is that this person says that they have a belief that they're finding it difficult to manage one strong belief that if I miss an opportunity which matters a lot to me, then it takes years to get another opportunity. 
So the belief that the person has is if I miss an opportunity, which matters a lot to me, right? And so what I want you to do, and I wish I could say your name, but it's Maheta Forum, whatever that is. Okay? Um, so what I want you to do, and this is what my teacher would say to me, welcome wanting to miss opportunities that matter a lot to you. And you're like, what? <laughs> but if you welcome wanting to miss opportunities that matter a lot to you and then welcome the feelings that you have of wanting to regress and welcome any feelings of regression. Now, that seems totally contradictory, right? But let me explain because it's not. Why would you want to miss opportunities that matter a lot to you? Well, actually, the fact that you have a belief of that means that somehow, somehow you have thoughts that got into your subconscious mind that formed a belief and you know that otherwise you wouldn't have this belief at all. And so you definitely have it. Your subconscious mind thinks you want this, thinks you want it. It's got it all wrong, but it got some thoughts and it, and it just accepted it. And it was maybe when you were a child or you heard somebody say something and you just accepted it. And so that's how we know that we need to take this belief out. And if you welcome wanting to miss opportunities that matter a lot to you, if you welcome it, you release it. You release it. So welcoming is just like opening up like this, welcoming with your arms out, kind of like this, and just welcoming that. And when you welcome that, you are releasing that belief. It's so incredible. Really, it's so easy. It's worth the effort. It really is worth it because any negative subject, any negative feelings, any belief that you don't want, that's it. That's the one practice that's why it's in the greatest secret in my latest book the greatest secret this is the most important thing you could ever do I've been doing it now for since I met my teacher which was in 2016 2016 I just don't have I can't even find a belief I'd love to find one I'd love to find one because I'd love to get it you know but uh, uh, so everything that we're experiencing is because somehow our subconscious mind thinks we want it. Incredible, right? There are some things we don't want at all, but our subconscious mind thinks we do want it. We have inadvertently believed something, so that's why you welcome wanting something you absolutely don't want because you're releasing the hidden beliefs that are causing it, you see. It's interesting, isn't it? It's kind of a reverse... Uh, but it's what you have to do with the subconscious mind. And and you can kind of, um, oh, I wish I could remember an instance where my teacher <laughs> said to me, um, it'll come, one will come to me, I, I remember talking to her and she would say, welcome. Uh, I, I would say, oh, I don't, I don't like the feeling of fear. And she would say, welcome wanting the feeling of fear. And I'd be like, no. I don't want it. She's like, no, you have to welcome not wanting it. Because look, no, I don't want it. You're pushing it away. And guess what? You, you're going like that. You're not going like that. You're going like that. And you're pushing it down inside of you. Super gluing it to you. And rule number 10, the last one before some very special bonus clips is shift your perspective. From the perspective of the person, okay, we will be afraid of leaving the people we love. From the perspective of the person, which is the mind and the ego, we'll be afraid of dying, okay? But from the perspective of the infinite being that you are, which is awareness, you can never be afraid of anything and you will never be afraid of leaving anyone because you know that you can never be separated from anyone, ever because we are one. You will never be separated from anyone. And so from the perspective of the infinite being who knows that everything is perfect, that everything is just fine, that bodies end, but we do not end, uh, there is no fear at all. And so what's really tricky is if you 
are trying to get the person not to be afraid or the ego and the mind not to be afraid and and trying to get the ego mind not to be afra- afraid of leaving people behind, you're never going to do it, okay? It's never going to happen because the ego and the mind, the ego is afraid of dying, always going to be. That's why you want to get off the ego boat and get onto the infinite being boat, right? Because the infinite being, the infinite being knows everything is fine and is always joyful and is always happy. I don't want to go. I don't want to go. I don't want to go and leave you guys. Everything is possible, you know, when you believe. That's the kind of kicker. You have to believe. But it's not that hard. It's really pretty easy. Our belief creates our entire life experience. And so you can't, if I put it this way, you can't experience anything in life that is outside of your own beliefs. So, and that's that's the case for every single one of us. We really can't experience anything that's outside of our beliefs. If we can't experience anything that's outside of our beliefs, what that means is, look at all those hearts, that's so beautiful. <laughs> what that means is there's not really one world. We kind of think there's one world, but there isn't really because we're all experiencing a world based on our beliefs and not one of us has the same beliefs, not one of us. So that means there's a different world for every one of us. So all of your beliefs are held in your subconscious mind and the subconscious mind is just a part of your mind. There's the conscious mind and then there's the subconscious mind, which is actually higher than the conscious mind. And so we use our conscious mind with all of the thoughts and everything that we have. Our conscious mind is very present, right? And so to create anything you are using your subconscious mind. Your subconscious mind is what is really what creates. If I want to make it really, really simple, then I would say your subconscious mind is what creates. It makes things appear and manifests things. And that's where all of your beliefs are stored. Kind of neat, huh? Because you have to believe to manifest something and your subconscious mind creates everything. So you can see it's all kind of perfectly designed. Um, So now to manifest, you have to believe. And you have to believe that you already have whatever it is that you want. And the reason that you have to believe you have it already is because the subconscious mind is only operating in the present. It can't reason. It's just like a program. So if you say, for example, um, a new car is coming, my new car is coming, I'm going to get a new car, it's coming, well, then it's always going to be coming, right? That's the, that's the thing. You have to imagine you have it now. You have to go off and you have to test drive the car. You've got to feel the car, smell the car, and just then visualise being in that car. And then when you do that, that's how... If you do that enough, that's how you'll come to believe that you actually have the car. And the moment that you believe, there's manifestations instantaneous. So so the other ways to believe is to affirm over and over and over. Um, So to be really repetitive, for example, um, to visualise. And visualising is incredibly powerful Because when we close our eyes and we put ourselves in the picture, and you must make sure you're in the picture, and you put yourself in the picture with whatever it is that you want and you close your eyes and you just kind of create this mini movie. Honestly, the subconscious mind does not know that you're imagining it, has no idea. It just sees that movie and recreates it. It's like a giant photocopying machine. It will just, whatever you hold in your mind, it will photocopy it, boom, into the world. So um, so if you are thinking about something in the future, it's always going to be in the future. So you have to imagine that you have it now. You have to act as if. And, um, for example, if you wanted to attract a perfect partner, 
Are you acting as if your perfect partner's here already? And so there are just small things that you can do that are super, super powerful. For example, are you sleeping in the middle of your bed or are you sleeping on one side of the bed because your partner's on the other side of the bed? Do you have room in your wardrobe for your perfect partner's clothes? Is there room in your bathroom for their toothbrush and for their things? And so you see, they are just little things. You can set the table for two. You don't have to put food on the plate, but just setting the table for two is really, really powerful. It's saying my perfect partner's here already and the subconscious mind will believe it and your perfect partner will be attracted to you through the most incredible circumstances. So um, if something hasn't manifested yet and you really, really want it, and I, I doubt there's anybody out there who's who wants something and it hasn't manifested, right? I mean, I <laughs> um, I'll tell you the reason why it hasn't manifested is because you don't believe you have it. Doubt is, comes from the mind and they're just thoughts and and they're, the reason that they're appearing is because you have a belief that is saying that you don't have this already. But just don't give those doubts any, any energy and work harder on feeling that you have your manifestation because when you believe you have your manifestation no thoughts of doubt will come when you believe you have it you have overridden any other belief in the subconscious mind you've reprogrammed your subconscious and then it will manifest so just remind yourself that you are the power that creates everything effortlessly effortlessly you are that power so so just Take it, it's not, it's not an effort, it's really easy, you know, it's, it's really easy. Just take it easy, let go, of the, let go of the doubtful thoughts. The welcoming practice sounds counterintuitive, that you would welcome something, right, that you don't want. It's like, whoa, hang on a minute, that doesn't make any sense. It does when I explain this to you, is that what, when something that we don't want appears, we resist it. And if you remember in the secret, what you resist persists. And so if you're resisting something you don't want, it will never go away. Welcoming is the opposite to resisting. Welcoming stops you from resisting. That's why it's so brilliant. Because resistance is not fab, really. Um, but even that idea of resistance not being fab is something to welcome. That thought is something to welcome and just welcome that thought and then that thought will completely dissolve instead of building up inside of you and the mind saying, yeah, resistance isn't any good, yeah, you know, the mind adding a whole lot of other thought, <laughs> whole lot of other thoughts. So that's a perfect example of welcoming. Now, what I did just then, because I've welcomed for the last four years, what I did just then, I felt it completely dissolve in my chest, that thought. I, the feeling that was behind that thought just completely dissolved and now that is gone. So it's, it's, it's that easy. How do we break that negative thought pattern? Right. So, so you, I mean, the mind is like a computer program. So, and, and the fact that it's on a negative loop is because we programmed it on a negative loop. But, but you know, we could have been influenced when we were children and things like that. So, um, so it, one of the things that the mind loves is loves repetition. I mean, it loves it. You know, if you really watch your thoughts, this is the same old thoughts over and over again, you know, it's just kind of dishing up the same old thing. So it loves repetition. So the way you can override a program is to put in the opposite, you know, and when you start out, you know, you feel like you're lying, you know, you'll say something like, you know, you might be really broke. Gee, I was when I was making the secret. So um, you, you might not have any money and you're trying to instill, you know, wealth and prosperity and riches and every time you say it, you feel a contraction in your body because you know you don't have it. But, you know, truly because I did it myself, after a while you change it, you, re you really begin to change it and you don't quite have that contraction anymore. And then you start to see money coming in, you know, in, in different ways. Um, and, and, it, and, and, or you can be given things that you were going to buy and now you don't have to buy it. Or so you begin to see, you start to see signs of land, you know, is one of the great, one of the great new thought 
thought um, writers would say, talk about a sign of land. So you start to see sign of land. Now, that's what I did in The Secret. You can do gratitude. That will turn everything around. That will make you feel good. That will get you off the negative rant. But those negative thoughts are coming from beliefs held in the subconscious mind, right? That's Where, where do the beliefs stem from for most of us? They stem mostly from our childhood conditioning, yeah. Mm-hmm. Somebody's, our parents said something to us, we just swallowed it, hook, line, and sinker. You know, we're like, right, that's a belief. And, uh, and so we take it in and, and then we have all these beliefs that, that uh, and you can hear, you know, if, you, if you're talking to somebody, like if, if, if somebody says, oh, I believe da, 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 or because we say that all the time, or somebody says, I think da, 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 behind those two, uh, behind those two statements are going to be a belief. Mm. And so the really interesting thing, they're hard to spot because you believe they're true. <laughs> they seem real, right? yeah. They seem so you real. don't think, yeah, you don't think they're a belief. You, you think they're real, you know, and so they can be hard to spot. But if you start to listen to yourself, you know, I believe or I think, or especially look at the things that you have a really strong opinion about, mm. because where you have a really strong opinion is a belief that's underneath that. So, so one of the things that in the latest book is that I show how to. Um, show how to dissolve those those beliefs and j- just really by some of the things that I've just mentioned and, uh, and and you can dissolve them and you just feel free. Every time a belief goes out, you feel completely free. You know, it's an it's amazing, amazing feeling. To, you just feel as light as a feather and actually you feel invincible. So when you think a deliberate thought of what you want, Um, then law of attraction will employ the universe and all people, circumstances and events to move you to what you've asked for and to move what you've asked for to you. And so if, if, if you think about that, there is just action would be really, really hard for you to reach all of the people, circumstances and events, manipulate all of them to receive what you want. And if you really reflect well on your life and things that have happened in your life, you kind of see that actually that happened for me. Uh, All I did was move to here or all I did was move to there and I received what I wanted. Thought creates all of the appearances in the world and thought creates everything in your life. So it's pretty darn powerful, right? And what you think about is what you get, what you focus on is what will manifest in your life. And everyone is manifesting their day every single day. We're doing it. Um, We are not aware, of course, necessarily of thoughts, but Thoughts come, we energize them, and then they will manifest unless we cancel that thought out um, with another thought, with a thought that contradicts it. But I remember Lester Levinson would say, every single thought manifests. And I just thought that was incredible. I had known the secret for years and years and years. And Lester Levinson was a real master. Um, and he said every single thought manifests, and I was just, wow, that's how powerful they are. So, so thoughts are your superpower to be, do, and have what you want to experience and have and do in your life. And and so, if you ask. Um, an athlete or if you talk to a coach a really brilliant coach right of a sports team then you will find that visualization and these principles that I'm talking about are a big part of their training that they have to be they have to see themselves winning the game they have to see themselves winning the match there is a really incredible tennis player that's a very big fan a, a, um, a champion tennis player that's a really big fan of the secret who uses the secret this is what he does he sees that he has won the match before he walks out onto that court and and it's the same for um for teams it's the same for athletes in the olympic games 
running a race and seeing that they've won. Yes, they run the race, but what has them win the race is that they saw themselves winning before they even got on the starting block and they saw it and believed it and felt it. And so they just, everything lined up for them in the perfect way. They drew the perfect lane. Everybody else was was moved in exactly the right position and they got a really great start and they won the race. And so thought is just so, so powerful. So athletes, but also do you know, the astronauts in the Apollo um, program did visualization before they went to the moon and they visualized landing back on Earth safely. And so that's how important visualization is. Visualization is just thought in pictures, by the way. It's, it's, it's still thought. It's just the same thing, okay? It's just thought in pictures. So if you took a person who had zero resistance and you lock them in a room, you know, if you took a person that had zero resistance, that person thought about what they wanted, zero resistance, lock them in a room, what they wanted will come to them. The universe will move people, circumstances and events and bring that right to them. It must, it absolutely must. Because if you have no resistance, you have unleashed a law that just cannot be stopped. And so you will manifest, it will come to you. I had this belief that I did not have an abundant amount of money and uh, that I was always in struggle. And that came from my parents, bless them, you know, they're beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, but that, that came from them, you know, we can't afford it and all of those things. So I was brought up with that as many of us are. So the, the one, one that I had the biggest thing to overcome, the belief, the biggest thing to overcome was the belief in lack of money. And, and I knew I needed to overcome that for the secret to sweep the world. All the things I was going to buy, you know, when the money came in. Huh. Um, so I did all of these lists and I imagined that I had those things already. Um, and yeah, and I wanted, I remember it was like, I want a house on the ocean. I really went all out, you know, that was just some list. Um, one of the things I remember is that I'd always wanted a Range Rover all of my life, and that was just beyond anything I could afford. And uh, especially in Australia, like they were crazy prices. So, but still, I put it on the list and I put all these things on the list. But, you know, interestingly enough, like I did that because that was a way to turn money around. But when the secret got released, I didn't care about any of it because. Mm. And I didn't even care. All that mattered was that I had got it out into the world and now it was in the world. It could never be taken away. And that is what mattered to me more than anything is that that was going to get into people's hands. And so, um, but still, I have to tell you, got all the things on the list. <laughs> you know, there's amazing views out here of the ocean. Um, I ended up by getting a Range Rover. Um, and so, yeah, but I did... I did a lot of practices. The best thing that could happen to everybody is that their greatest dream comes true. Because when your greatest dream comes true, the dream that where you are absolutely convinced that when this dream comes true, that is when I will really be happy. The best thing that can happen is that dream comes true because when it does, you will realize that there is something missing and that happiness that you thought you would have doesn't last. And so it's, you know, it's, it's, it's such a beautiful thing. And for people who have been successful, then they get to that point and they're like, they're not happy. And they're not happy because those things were never going to make you happy in the first place anyway. And so, um, but in terms of success, I would say this, that when you are who you really are, when you're living from the place more of who you are than who you are not, everything that you need and want will fall into your hands effortlessly. And you are actually the infinite being is effortless. And the way to kind of tell who's in charge is whether it's the ego or the mind that's in charge or, or who you really are that is in charge in any moment is effort. 
And if you're efforting, if you can feel this efforting, then it's the ego and the mind. And if you're coming from a place of effortlessness, where athletes call it being in the flow and everybody has these kind of descriptions, it's where the mind has stopped. And just everything is flowing. You just feel like everything in the universe is just dancing your dance and singing to your song. And so in terms of success, when you are being more of who you are, that idea that was going to make you successful is what will come to you, that original idea, because the mind just recycles. That's all it can do. It's a program and recycles. And the ideas that business kind of business ideas that have never been on earth, they are coming from awareness. They are coming from above the mind. So when you are awareness, that is when everything will fall into your hands, everything that you need. And it just, your whole life flows and you're just happy all of the time. I love going with the flow. I really do because I have found that life will present to me manifestations far greater than I could ever imagine with my mind and so I'm really just these days letting everything go because life does a way better job than me of I can't even think of things that, that are more fantastic than what life does. In my latest book The Greatest Secret the most important practice in that book without a doubt is welcoming negative emotions because when you welcome any negative emotion, you are dissolving it from within your body, from within the subconscious mind. The next time, say, for example, if it was anger, the next time you feel anger, it's not nearly as bad. You welcome again the time after that. It's reducing, reducing until it's not possible for you to feel anger anymore. And with that anger gone from your body, your body, the health of your body is working brilliantly. But two, you will just manifest like you can't believe, like just a single little flimsy thought and it will manifest. So getting rid of negative emotions, also negative emotions are covering over your basic nature, which is happiness. And all of this I explain in The Greatest Secret. I explain it all in here. Um, and so, yeah, it's your, it's your basic nature. So negative emotions are covering up your happiness. So to get rid of those emotions is really, really important. So now I wanted to explain that to everybody who doesn't know about the welcoming process. And now let me explain the welcoming process to you. What we tend to do with negative emotions is we tend to resist them because they don't feel good, right? And so we want to push them away. We don't want to feel them. We don't want to feel fear. We don't want to feel disappointment, impatience and anger. And so we'll push them away. We think we're pushing them away. But in actual fact, we're pushing them down here into our body, into the subconscious mind. And they act like a pressure cooker. They're causing harm to the body, but they also act like a pressure cooker in that they need to release some energy to so that because they're just about to burst and so they'll find something in the world an emotion will find something in the world to get angry about to release the pressure in your body and so welcoming is the opposite to resisting you're pushing them away now you're not going to do that now you're going to welcome the negative emotion so when a negative emotion arises, basically what you're going to do is kind of do nothing, you know. Really, um, welcoming is just stopping us from resisting. What I do is I imagine that that emotion is a really, really good friend of mine and I'm just allowing it to be here. I'm allowing it to be here in the body and I just imagine that it's a friend and I put my arms around it and as you welcome it or allow it to be here, something absolutely incredible happens. It just dissolves. It just dissolves. And in that moment, you have managed to get rid of a whole lot of that negative emotion in your body. And so that's why this is the most incredible process because A, you will get happier and happier. B, every desire you've ever wanted will be fulfilled. And C, you will have the most incredible life, a life free of fear and, um, 
and knowing who you are and understanding the incredible power you have in the world. So just imagine that it's you have a friend and you're putting your arms around a friend. That is how I do it. But also, too, something you can do is I'll just make sure you can see my arms. What you can do is just open your arms up like this because opening your arms like this sort of opens the whole chest area and that automatically makes you stop resisting, right? And you open like this and you will feel that negative emotion dissolve. For all of us, you know, and uh, uh, we've been conditioned, you know. I mean, you were very fortunate because you you had a, a childhood where you were mind was opened and you were opened and your heart was opened. And that's the biggest, biggest thing is to open yourself to the possibility that everything isn't the way it appears to be. And so even if you can just open yourself to that possibility, just for a moment, you can pick up it all the next day. You can take it all with you the next day that it's all real and everything that you're seeing. But if you just for a moment open to the possibility that things might not be the way that you think they are, then you have the greatest opportunity to really discover something incredible, how incredible you are. Because you made it this far in a video, I want to celebrate you. Most people start and don't finish. Most people never actually follow through. Most people say they want something, but they don't ever do the work to actually get it. But you are different. You are special. Believe Nation, you made it here all the way to the end, and I love you. So it's a special celebration if you put a hashtag believe down in the comments below on this video. I will showcase you and celebrate you somewhere on the screen in a future video because you are awesome. For 10 more amazing rules from Louise Hay, check the video right there next to me. I think you'll love it. Continue to believe and I'll see you there. Stop all criticism. Just stop it now and forevermore. And make a vow to yourself that you're going to do your very best from now on to stop criticizing number one